All right, guys, Darren from Honest Money and welcome back to another video. So in this week's video, we're going to be talking about EVs. Now, I'm sure many of you would have heard on the news last week that the UK government have decided to bring forward the ban on petrol and diesel cars to 2030. Now, I knew there was always some division around whether EVs are good and which side people take. But actually looking through the comments section on the BBC article, um, there is quite a divide between the two sides. I mean, it's almost as contentious as Brexit. So what I wanted to do in this video is just go through what I'm going to call an EV Skeptics FAQ. So for anyone that's still sitting on the fence, which is completely understandable, hopefully it will put a positive spin on EVs. Also, I've just ordered an EV, not in response to this announcement. I actually ordered it at the end of October. So this wasn't a knee-jerk reaction. This is something I actually wanted to do and wasn't in response to this announcement. And at the end of this video, I will be sharing with you which EV I've actually ordered. Um, and spoiler alert, it is not a Tesla. It's actually a different EV. So I'll show you that at the end of the video. So like I say, these are my EV Skeptics FAQs. And why have I called them the EV Skeptics? Because these are some of the questions that I've seen pop up in comments. Also some of the questions uh, or statements, shall I say, that I've had from people when I've told them that I've just ordered an EV. So let me know what you guys think of these FAQs. If you wanna contribute your own opinion, of course, feel free to let me know in the comments below. So the first question I've been asked is, why would you order an EV? I mean, there are perfectly good petrol and diesel cars out there. Why would an order an EV? Well, there are three reasons really. One, I'm a huge fan of tech and the EVs seem to be at the forefront of tech. Two, obviously the environmental impact, which I'll come back to a bit later in this video, as I know that is contentious as well. Um, and thirdly, if you watched my video from probably a month or two back where I covered company car tax, I explained how the EVs were being kind of really supported by the government at the moment as they were being zero rated if the car has zero emissions, there was no benefit in kind tax to pay. So as this is gonna be going through the company, an EV car was kind of top of my list. So the tax savings I'll be making through this vehicle mean it will actually be cheaper than my current petrol car, which currently costs a lot less, but because of the way I have to pay for that, it works out costing more than a more expensive car does. Hope that makes sense. If not, go and check out that video. I'll link to it in the top comment because um, it should explain why EV cars are a very good choice now if you want a company car. So those are the three reasons why I've kind of gone the EV route at the moment. Um, am I worried about range? Well, for someone that works from home um, and rarely drives long distance, no, I don't have any concerns about range. Now, obviously I understand people all have unique situations. Um, so I can understand why some people would be worried about range. Um, a stat I saw the other day was that 99% of journeys in the UK are under 100 miles. So I think the range issue is maybe blown out of proportion a little bit when you consider how people actually use their car in this country. Obviously, there are gonna be certain people that do need longer ranges, and we're already seeing cars with ranges of maybe three, four, even 500 miles that are possible on a single charge. And you can only imagine how much better they're gonna get, especially in nine years time, once the ban on petrol and diesel cars arrives. Uh, what about going on holiday? This is another one that's popped up. So when I've said to people, I'm not worried about rain. So like, what about if you go on holiday to the north of England? You know, you've got to drive two, 300 miles. So what about then? Um, well, the car I'm getting is going to have a range of about 200 miles. So I probably would have to stop for a charge on the way. If that was the case, I don't know about you guys, but if, if you're going on holiday in the UK and you're doing a long drive, I normally plan to stop for lunch anyway. And most EVs will plan the route for you and tell you the best places to stop. So you can stop, charge a car up for half hour, have your lunch and continue about your journey. So I'm not too worried about going on holiday if I was driving across the UK. Um, up next, aren't all EVs ugly? Um, to be fair, this is what I used to think as a lot of the early EVs, you know, if you talk about things like the BMW i3, um, the Nissan Note, maybe the Hyundai Ionic, apologies to anyone that drives these cars, or even a lot of the more recent EVs, I find the manufacturers tend to style the car to try and make it just look different for the sake of it because it's an EV. So a lot of EVs do end up looking quite ugly. Um, but again, this is all subjective. And some of the cars I've just mentioned, I appreciate some of you guys might find really nice looking cars. And that's why we all drive different cars as different things appeal to us. I mean, even Teslas for me, aren't that attractive. I can already feel people clicking the thumbs down button, but that's one of the reasons why I didn't go for a Tesla. However, the car I picked, I actually really like the look of. Uh, you guys might not, but I really like the look of it. So some EVs are ugly just as with other cars. You know, some cars are ugly, some cars aren't. It's all very much personal preference and personal taste. 
Now this next one is quite a big one and that is how much will it actually cost to recharge one of these EVs? Well, this will very much depend on the EV itself and how big the battery is that you need to recharge. Um, if you're charging it at home, it will depend what electric tariff you're on. If you're charging it out and about, it will again, it will depend what charging station you're using. Now, based on the research I've done, I would imagine it's going to cost between five to ten pounds to recharge most cars. So I think that's quite good, especially when you think it probably costs between fifty to seventy pound uh, to refuel either a petrol or a diesel car. If I can top up my car for between five to ten pound, then that sounds like a good saving to me. And um, following on from that, how long does it actually take to recharge? Well, again, this will depend where you're charging it and how you're charging it without getting into kind of the specifics of kilowatt hours and stuff like that. If you're charging it on at home on kind of a standard three pin plug-in it's going to be very slow and it might take you one to two days to charge it if you get a home wall charger which many people are going for now um, you might be able to charge it maybe seven to ten hours if you're using some of the high power stations which are out and about then maybe it could be down to as short as 30 minutes so there's definitely flexibility there depending on how much of a rush you're in and also depend what infrastructure you want to put in at home on top of that um, aren't EVs actually worse for the environment? And this is something that I used to believe. I've actually looked into a lot of the research on this. Um, the argument was basically that a lot of the batteries and the technology behind EVs require lots of rare materials and the actual techniques used to mine these and acquire them use up more CO2 than actually just building a normal petrol car or a diesel car and then burning the fossil fuels that way. Um, but a lot of the studies have now shown that even taking that all into account, it is still better for the environment to drive an EV than it is to drive a standard ICE car, which is your internal combustion engine car, so your petrol or your diesel. So EVs in theory shouldn't actually be worse for the environment. Obviously, the more you drive the EV, the better it will be for the environment as you'll be doing more miles um, with less CO2 emitted or zero CO2 emitted. I know obviously there are CO2 generated when the energy is produced, but it can be produced in much cleaner ways than fossil fuels can. Uh, number eight, the UK doesn't have a good enough charging infrastructure. Yep, that is a fair point. Um, you know, there's not a huge amount of charging infrastructure points around the country. However, if everyone has a charging point at home, and I'm sure in the next nine years, they're going to add a lot, lot more charging points. I really don't see it being an issue. You know, I'm hoping I'm never going to have to go to a petrol station again. Um, you know, I'm just going to charge it at home maybe once a week as and when I need to. So you don't need a good enough charging infrastructure if you've got a good charger at home. And hopefully cars, when they get to that range of three, four, five hundred miles, Maybe we won't ever have to go to those petrol stations again. Uh, number nine, aren't EVs heavy and slow? Yes, generally speaking, compared to their counterpart, EVs will be much heavier as the batteries do weigh quite a bit. Now, are they slow? Um, I would actually disagree with that. Even the low powered ones, due to the way the electricity power is delivered, they usually feel very, very brisk. And the car that I'm going for is quite fast, even though that isn't the primary reason I'm going for it. Um, EVs definitely aren't slow. Um, and I don't know if any of you guys have actually been in an EV. Like I went in a Tesla Model S a couple of years ago with a friend, and they are very, very rapid. So don't ever think EVs are slow. Yes, they are heavy, uh, but that should come down, um, especially with some of the changes that are coming. I think Tesla are starting to actually build the chassis out of batteries as well. So I think the weight of cars are going to continue to come down, but they are definitely not slow. And number 10, won't you miss petrol cars? Um, I have to be honest, yes, I think I am going to miss petrol cars. I mean, when I, like I say, I went in that Tesla, it was very, very fast but it didn't really get the heart pumping as there was no engine noise and no exhaust noise. So I think I will miss petrol cars from that perspective, kind of the event of going fast and the noise they make. Um, but I'm hoping that the benefits of the EV car will bring, which is the instant power, the clean energy, the future tech inside the car. I'm hoping then things will help offset it. Also, I've been driving either hot hatches or hot estates for about the last 10 years. Um, and since my son was born a year ago, I don't find I drive very fast at all. So I think maybe those cars are wasted on me now. And I think EVs are probably the best choice for me going forward as I get all of the power I need for the maneuvers, such as joining the motorway or pulling out junctions or overtaking. Um, but without the temptation to maybe drive a little bit like a loon <laughs> when the moment arises. So what car have I actually ordered? Well, let me take you out of this presentation and take you over to the manufacturer's website. So here we are on the Polestar website. Now I know for many of you, you may not have heard of Polestar, or if you have, you didn't necessarily know that they were an EV brand. So Polestar used to be the performance division of Volvo. And then when Volvo were purchased by Geely a few years back, 
they split Polster off into a performance EV division instead. So the Polster one was released a couple of years ago. It's kind of a £150,000 uh, performance car. Um, and off the back of that success, they've just released the Polster 2, which is what I've just ordered. Um, and this is on lease. So if you go back to some of my previous leasing videos, which again, I'll link to in the comments. So I'll put a link in the comment to the lease videos, and also company car tax. So I'll be leasing this car for two years through my business. So the Polster 2 is the car I'm going for. Um, I'm actually going for it in this Thunder Grey. So that's the color you see there. Let's see what other pictures we've got. Um, so it's quite a it's quite a chunky, squarey, uh, macho car, I think. I personally think this looks massively better than Teslas do. But again, that is personal preference. And I completely understand if someone prefers a Tesla look over this. Um, in terms of the interior, looks very nice. Most of it is based on uh, Volvo equipment. So a lot of the switch gear you'll see in there, the steering wheel, it's all based on Volvo. So you know it's very well tested. And it has a huge screen here, which is all built around Android and Google. So anyone that's got an Android phone will feel very, very comfortable using this. And one of probably the deal breaker reasons why I couldn't go for a Tesla is on the Tesla, you don't actually have a dash here. You have the speedo on the central screen. Whereas this, you get traditional digital displays here so you can see your speed right in front of you, which is a big, big deal for me. So if anyone is considering an EV at the moment, I would say to them, you know, go and check out the uh, the Polestar. It is a very, very good alternative to the Tesla. Uh, this one in standard spec comes with, it's around about 400 horsepower in old money. Um, so it's very, very fast, 0 to 60 in less than five seconds um, and should be nice and practical. It's a family car as you've got two boots, you've got the boot and the front, as they call it, the front trunk, even though it's not very big on the Polestar. So let me know what you guys think. You know, do you drive an EV? Do you plan to drive an EV? What do you think of this band? What do you think of the Polestar too? You know, am I crazy for going for this? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, I really appreciate it. If you could take a moment, hit that like button. And if you want to see more videos from me, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in next week's video.